What are the biggest logistical challenges of bringing in artists from across the world? You know, every every year and every artist presents its own individual challenges. Um, you know, we had, uh, when we brought Cobra, we originally booked his flights and they went through Canada and the transfer visa didn't work. And so we had to rebook all of their flights the night before they showed up. Um, we've had, I mean, last year, you know, I mean, we had it, we took a year off for COVID and last year we could only bring domestic artists because we couldn't get visas for anyone out of the country. Mm. Um, and so travel is, is a big part of it. Um, but it's, you know, every single thing, like when we started, we always joke, like we had no idea what we were doing. Um, and it's like, we didn't know how to get paint. We didn't know how many lists we needed. We didn't know. I mean, all these things, um, you know, add that on top of it's in October. So that's Keeneland, which means every single hotel room is three times as expensive. Um, and so it's, it's a lot of like, for us, it's a lot of the logistics of the, you know, once things get going, it's not so bad. It's, you know, it's making sure all the paints in, it's making sure the wall's done, it's making sure parking spots are blocked off. It's, uh, you know, we've been nice that Lexton, the parking authority has been cool with us. Um, we probably owe them a lot in fines, but <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. So, I mean, for it's, uh, you know, and a lot of it comes down to just, there's only so many hours in the day. Um, you know, Jessica works full time when prohibition's on, I'm up at five 30 in the morning and I go to bed at about, unfortunately like three, <laughs> Wow! <laughs> because, you know, uh, we have a seven year old and he's got to go to school at seven. We picked up at two and then I've got four murals going and then the artists come back at the end of the day. Nobody wants to like, you know, have dinner and go to bed at eight o'clock. Everyone wants to sit up and drink and talk and, you know. Uh, shoot the shit and catch up and, and uh, you know, discuss whatever crazy thing happened at their mural that day. Um, and so it's just, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of time. And if if we had more hours in the day, it'd be easier. But, uh, you know, until they figure that out, we'll just, we'll just have to keep rolling with it. All right. Cool. Cool. Uh, this one may be getting into the weeds a little bit, but just in case anyone's thinking of using this platform, like you've been using Kickstarter for your mm -hmm. fundraising platform for several years. What were you using before and why did you switch? Yeah, so we started, um, the first year we did it, we literally begged, borrow and pleaded from friends and business owners and family members and you know whoever we could get in touch with. Um, and so the first year was really scrambling. Um, and, and at that point, we kind of realized that um, I hate asking for money. Um, I, I'm not a big like, you know, it's just, it's not my thing. I'm not comfortable with it. And so what we did was we're like, all right, well, let's switch over to a platform where we can say, here's what we will give you being murals of the festival and also like rewards, like t-shirts and stickers and stuff. And if you think it's worth it, then you can be part of it and, and you know, and you can support it and donate. Um, and so our, our view of it is that we do it and we run it but it is something that we do for the city and that it's so community driven that in that way, if people at some point decide that they don't want us to do it anymore, they can tell us through the Kickstarter, you know, they can, they can not donate money. They can say, we hated your murals last year. Uh, we're sick of it. Not giving you 50 bucks or, you know, 20, I think our average donation is like $37, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, it shows that there's a, a wide swath of people who, who believe in it. Um, but, but in that way, we've been able to um, ask for money in a way that's like, hey, if you want to, cool. If you don't, cool. Um, without having to like, you know, knock on doors or have dinner parties or, you know, schmooze and, and you know, try and like rub elbows and, and get checks. Um, but it really does. I mean, I, I think that the, the, it allows the community to invest in a project that they believe in uh, instead of investors to put money into it and then be like, Oh, well, we want you to do this. or we want you to do that. Um, and it's been great. Can you put my logo in the mural. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. man. I've had that before. Uh, Ooh. we will not do that. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, no, we, we work with a lot of other businesses throughout the year to do, uh, the farm out local artists to help them get paid work. And, um, and, and for people who want to commission artworks. Um, but yeah, but we're, we're very, so much like, Hey, if someone wanted to say like, Hey, prohibition presented by, I don't know, whoever for a bunch of money, dude, we'd be down. That'd be mm -hmm. great. But, yeah. uh, 
but you know, we're not seeking that out and, and, and we really like being able to operate independently um, and, and being able to be true to kind of our vision for it and, and what people have come to support over the years. All right. So uh, which, which artists are on your wish list for the future? We've been lucky enough, honestly, to get a lot of the artists that we wanted. Um, you know, we had How and Nazem here. We had uh, we've had Flem a couple times, and we had Faith Forty Seven was here, and a lot of artists. That, like even from the beginning, we were we were trying to get. Um, uh, I mean, let's be honest. I'd love to have Shepherd Ferry here. Oh, we um, want it. <laughs> I feel like he's in every city around us, and not us. It just hasn't worked out. We ask him every year. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Uh, I'd love to get Bez and Saner from Etom Crew. Um, I would love to have there's a guy named Hoxo that's really good. Oh, one of my favorites is a guy named Smug One from the UK that I absolutely love. Okay. Incredible photorealistic work. Um, but we, you know, it just hasn't lined out yet. So we'll see. We're we're gonna keep bugging them and and uh uh and see what happens. And we've been trying to be more conscious also of of bringing in a more diverse group of artists, um, people who, uh, you know, men, women, people who are white, black, whatever, from all over the world, just trying to keep it a little bit more, a little bit more diverse, Mm -hmm. mostly because, you know, street art is a very male dominated world. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we're trying to (laughs) highlight different artists, um, you know, through over the course of the years that, that hopefully will, um, you know, show a different side of it. Uh, because I mean, you can easily just go out and find five white male street artists and just do it. It'd be great. But like everybody else is, what's the point in that? Yeah. Why do you think it's so, uh, male dominated? Why, why is everything so male? dominated? Everything is. I mean, I, I didn't know if there's something specific to street art, but, uh, no, I, I think that, I think that it's, you know, it's art in general. I mean, if you look at mm-hmm. music, uh, you know, if you look at, let's say pick a, music festival lineup, whether it's, you know, indie, whether it's Bonnaroo or Electric Forest or EDC or, or Ultra or wherever, you're, you're going to, you can take a look at it and go, all right, well, 85% of these are male, uh, of these artists are male. Um, why do I think it's that way? Um, I think that's the way it's always been, but I think that it's changing. Um, you know, we're seeing a lot more like female artists, um, like, like I mentioned earlier, like Faith 47 and um, Julia Yubaba, who works with Key Detail. Um, I, I Andrew Hangburn, who we've had a couple times, is fantastic. Um, and there's a couple other artists that I'd, I'd love to see. Natalia Rock, um, um, she's fantastic. And, but they're really, you know, stepping, they're, they're stepping into a world that, that has been so male-dominated. Um, and I don't know if the guys are just louder and more pushy, but uh, is how we tend to be. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. So, but, uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, hopefully that changes and, and good for you for being more intentional about that. Mm-hmm. Is there any advice that you would give someone who says, my town is so boring. I want to mm-hmm. put on a street art fest. Yeah. Just do it. Um, that's my best piece of advice. <laughs> <laughs> just do it. You'll figure um, it out. Right. No, I mean, I think yeah. that, uh, for us, it was, it literally was like, um, we always joke around. It's like, why, why would you say no when you can say yes? Um, mm-hmm. you know, the, there's, there's no reason that you can't do it. Um, and, and, you know, part of what we do and part of what I do pretty regularly is, uh, talk to people from other cities, people from, uh, Ashland and Berea and, um, uh, you know, just in the last little bit, Danville and some of these other cities who are like, Hey, we want to start doing this. Um, I've got a buddy in, in Springfield, Missouri, who, like was just like i'm gonna do it I'm like all right i'm like you call me anytime you want i'm like i'm more than happy to talk about it um i think that really is like you know i i think for us i've been here for a while i love lexington lexington's my home um i love the people i love the you know the the town the city i love everything to do here i mean we've got uk basketball in keeneland and i mean you can't beat keeneland keeneland is my favorite um, but like, it's an incredible town, but it has this whole other side of like really great artsy people. And so for us, it was like, what, how do we fit in? We've always wanted to contribute and we've done that in so many different ways over the years. And, and prohibition has been our latest kind of thing. It's like, if you want to make it great, if you want to do it, just fucking do it. <laughs> yeah. 
You know, absolutely. Um, it doesn't really matter where you're from. It could be a place much smaller than Lexington. I have a friend in Lynn, Massachusetts. That's a mm-hmm. pretty small uh, place near Boston. Yeah. And uh, they, they put on a, a great street art festival. They've got a That's lot awesome. of awesome murals up there. I, I always think about the things we've done. It's like, with my wife, it's like, we went over the music venue. We opened a music venue. Uh, the bands that I wanted to see weren't coming to Lexington. It's like, I'm going to book them and bring them to Lexington. You know, um, and it's it, it's a lot of risk, and, and you know, and you have to be aware of that. But it's all doable. It's all possible, and it just depends on how badly you want to do it.